What's up you amazing hackers, I hope you're all doing well today. So we're going to do the first challenge on bugbountyhunter.com which is really impressive. It's based on a real life cross-site scripting vulnerability. And if you guys are interested in that, stay tuned for sure. But we're also going to do a quick giveaway. Thanks to Z Sean O, thank you very much. He's sponsoring a giveaway. He's going to give away some trial accounts for the member area of this website. That's going to include his personal methodology. So if you would like to get a chance to win that, Patreon supporters are automatically entered in their own draw. So if you want to be a Patreon supporter, link in the description below. It starts at $3. Um, if you want to enter the second giveaway, all you have to do is comment how I can contact you after the giveaway is over. So comment how I can contact you and also of course like the video, I would really appreciate that. And a third way to enter is share this video on Twitter. I will then contact the winner of the giveaway on Twitter. Um, if you want to make temporary emails for contacting you, I don't really care. As long as I can contact you, that would be amazing. Good luck, everybody. So can you find cross-site scripting on this harmless page? Let's see, shall we? Of course, we have the solution and we have a couple of hints available, but we also have some guides available. And I would advise you guys to go through these guides real quick because they're going to help you a bit. Uh, and I would also advise you guys to do this challenge on Chrome. It seems to work best on Chrome. Um, the guides that are here are what is cross-site scripting, master cross-site scripting by brute logic, and scanning JavaScript files for bugs. And the hints we have is look for common keywords which have a meaning, what are, where are those reflected parameters, and think single quote, not double quote. Now if we go to our website and we look at the page source, we can see a couple of things in here. We can see some head data and in here we have some metadata, some links to style sheets. And then we have the body which has the header in here. And after the header we have some strange JavaScript. Now this JavaScript may seem foreign to you, which is perfectly fine. If JavaScript seems foreign to you, it's simply because you haven't read it enough times. Just go through it slowly and try to understand what each of the functions do. If it's obfuscated, deobfuscated, but go through it and go through it manually. Tools are cool, use the tools of course, but also go through it manually. Now in here we have a function CFP parameter. Parameter is going to indicate the common thing that like the hint indicates, look for common keywords. Parameter is one of them. It's going to indicate that we need a parameter in the URL, I think, some kind of parameter somewhere since we don't have any parameters on the page themselves. And if we look into the function, we can actually see a regular expression that looks for the pound sign, then the name of the, reg of the parameter, and then an equals for the value. So we can do, we can already type this. We can type a pound sign behind our URL. So we can do go pound name equals value. And this will be how the structure is going to be made. And if we look a little bit further in here, we can see some other things now. These functions are not that important for our solution. And then we have some variables. Now, if you are looking for parameters, they're often going to be stored in variables. So it's a good idea to look for those variables. Like here, variable CFP pit. This is going to be an alpha parameter, not really important for us. Then we have CFP PRB, PR base. This is going to be the base URL. Then we have CFP click, which is a parameter CLK. And this might be the first one that we can look at. We also have a parameter called N. This is also one the, that we can look at and CFP ORT. We're going to look at N for now. So we just have N and a value. And let's just try a basic cross-site scripting attack factor like script, um, alert, and then lead or something like stupid. <laughs> let's just do it like this. There we go. Uh, and then we'll end our script tag. Now we want this inserted into our page, of course, but if we look at the page, if we inspect the page code, uh, we can actually see if we go and look for document.write, so let's go document.write. Dot right, there we go. So if we look at this, we can actually see that the JavaScript in here uses a single quote and not a double quote. 
So if we replace this with single quotes and here if we use here double quotes, we should be able to get our alert box to pop. Now it doesn't work immediately because of course I, let's see, I've made a couple of mistakes in here. Now, um, easy mistake, I need to leave these quotes off. I can just do my alert and let's see what else we've done wrong. So we need to end our previous script tag, of course. If we look at our page source itself, so let's look at this document.write again. We have our script tag here. We need to end this script tag because we want to insert our own script tag in there. So what we need to do, of course, is go back. We need to end this script tag. So go like this. And then we need to do slash script to indicate that that script is ending. Uh, and then let's see if we did anything else wrong. Um, slash script script. That should be OK. Let's see. Mm, we might have done something else wrong. Let's see real quick. This should be OK. And there we go, we have our alert popping. So that's why it's really important, you guys, that you always look into the code really deeply. So uh, it's like we made our mistake in here. If we go to our document.write, we try to insert our normal script tag, but that's not going to work. If we just try to insert our normal script tag in here, you can, you can imagine what's going to happen. It's just going to say, um, script source equals script and that's not going to work because you haven't escaped that previous script yet. You need to first of all end that one, then you can start your own and whatever happens after that, we don't really care, we just want our uh, attack factor. As you can see it hasn't fired immediately and there's a big reason for that, it's just caching. My browser has cached this website. If I refresh it again, you'll see that it pops. So if you have the same problem, refresh your website again and you'll see that it pops. In here, you'll see the attack factor appearing and we can also inspect the source, of course. Um, but it's not going to reveal much more useful things. This is just the script that's being ended and here we can see our own attack factor. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would really advise you guys to enter one of the giveaways. Good luck with that. It's going to be amazing. Thank you guys so much for 5,000 amazing hackers. I would have never thought I would be able to reach this. So thank you very much for tuning in. I hope I'll see you in the next one. I hope you learned something cool and I love you all. Bye amazing hackers.